What's cracking guys? Omar Yusuf here, back with another video here today to talk about the muscle group I'm known for, the ass chest. Uh, a lot of people obviously want to grow their chest. I think pretty much everyone, even if you're a power lifter, you do want bigger pecs, okay? As we know, uh, bigger pecs equal bigger paychecks. They also just make you look badass and lift more on the bench press, and the bench press is the most important lift. Now, a lot of people kind of get it wrong, and when I mean wrong, we grow at different rates as individuals. So some people will gravitate towards growing their arms. Maybe they're just more limb dominant. Some people are more torso dominant like myself. And so if you do the bench press, which the bench press is a fantastic movement, I do it two times a week, uh, it might not work for you. It might not work for your chest. And so you have to find what works right for your chest. In this video today, you might think to yourself, you see these uh, images floating around the internet of me in the ass chest, and you think, damn, Omar always had a chest. That is not the case. In fact, these four movements are highly underrated. They're probably, in my opinion, the most underrated chest exercises. And I feel bad, else because I'm revealing some movements that they probably deserve even their own video, but I'm giving away all my secrets at once, okay? okay? One weird trick to grow your chest massively. Four exercises that are underrated, probably you're not doing any of these four, and so consider substituting, if you normally do a bench press, consider substituting that out for the floor press, which I'll talk about. So you could use whatever movement that you're used to doing, try this variation out instead, and you should notice better chest hypertrophy. Let's start with number one, the floor press. I am the biggest floor press advocate. Why is the floor press superior than the bench press when it comes to growing your pecs? Simple, a few different things. Because you're on the floor, it limits the range of motion. Even like myself, where you use a bench press to increase the range of motion, it still stops a few inches short of your chest. What does this mean? Well, let's take a look at the grip position. This means you can widen your grip safely. A lot of people, when they try and go with a wide grip, and we know this naturally, right, uh, most bros, that the wider you grip the bench press, the more it's going to help activate your pecs. To a certain extent, but the wider you grip, the more it will activate your pecs. The problem, the wider you go, over time, a lot of people get gnarly shoulder issues. Enter the floor press. You could go wide. You could go heavy and you could still stimulate your chest while not aggravating your shoulders. So that's probably the biggest reason behind using the floor press. Point number two, this is a minor one, but it's very important. The elbows, you get a sense, a lot of people bench kind of crooked and so you'll notice one chest gets bigger than the other or you know, one tricep, one side gets bigger than the other. For even chest development, which is really important, the floor press, because you have that contact point, the point of contact, which is the floor, you could feel where the elbows are touching on the floor so you know if you're even or if you're not. And so if you have uneven chest development, which is a major case for a lot of bros out there, this will help fix that and make sure you're benching evenly. And then lastly, point number three when it comes to the floor press, why it's fucking awesome, as opposed to the bench press, you eliminate leg drive. And I know leg drive's not a huge component when it comes to the bench press, but it is some of a, uh, somewhat of a component. And we talk about the arch, we talk about leg drive. Those things limit your total range of motion. So instead, with the floor press, while you lose some at the bottom end here, which I would argue just makes it a little bit safer on your shoulder, you gain even more because you're not using leg drive, which means it's more upper body. And two, you don't have an excessive arch, so probably the range of motion is the same, and it's even safer on your shoulders. So for those reasons, I would say the floor press should be a staple if you want to grow your chest. Number two, I've talked about this one before, the low incline bench press versus the regular incline bench press. Let's get right into this. I used on an app a protractor to show the difference in the angles. The higher the incline, so the more steep the incline is, the more likely you are to develop and stimulate the anterior deltoid. And for some of us that are used to doing, you know, you do a front raise, you do an overhead press, you train your shoulders a lot, maybe they're growing a lot, the upper pec right here doesn't get the same amount of stimulation. It's harder to focus on because you try that higher incline and instead this guy right here, your deltoid takes over. And that's why we shift it to using a low incline bench press instead. I think the angle difference, I think on a regular bench press, the commercial bench press, it's probably like 33, 34 degrees. It's about eight degrees less when you use any normal incline that's adjustable. So you go to the lowest setting and instead it's a lot easier to target your chest. So I would say, if you do incline work, and I think everyone should do incline work, instead of doing a regular incline, if you have problems growing your chest, consider switching it to a low incline bench press and you'll probably find it easier to target that upper chest. Exercise number three, the reverse grip push-up. Now this one's really cool. This one I strongly advocate. You know I'm already a big fan of push-ups, but what is something that most chest exercises have in common? 
That is that we internally rotate the shoulder. So if we really want to bench press, if we want, really want to talk about stimulating the chest, you'll notice that people are usually internally rotated when it comes to their shoulders. Well, again, when we talk about our shoulder health, our rotator cuffs, over time, this can make it pretty gnarly. There is a reason why a lot of bros that train their chest often usually have shoulder issues. So if we want to do a high volume of chest exercises, it makes sense to be careful when it comes to our shoulder joint. And so what I'd recommend instead is a reverse grip push-up. This allows us to externally rotate, on the other hand, our shoulders. In fact, it will work your bicep just a little bit, which is an added bonus, but it'll allow you to do a high volume of push-up work without aggravating your shoulder. And for some people out there, if you do it on an incline, so if you put your feet up on an incline as opposed to just doing a flat push-up, what you might tend to notice, it's kind of like the same idea as doing a decline work when it comes to your push-ups. You might notice activation in your chest that you wouldn't normally feel because remember, the chest is relatively complicated and how you properly target a muscle group is you have to hit it up from different angles different compound movements and different variations. So an incline, putting your foot up on some sort of bench is an extra benefit I feel for the push-up and doing a reverse grip helps alleviate tension on the shoulder joint and instead allows you to target what you're there for, your chest. So point number three, the most underrated chest exercise would be a reverse grip incline push-up. Lastly, exercise number four, you have to throw in an isolation exercise when it comes to chest development. If you guys know me, I am a big fan of the low to high cable fly, which is a great movement. But for some individuals, once again, because this movement right here does target your anterior deltoid when you go from low to high. Let's try and fix this. Let's make it uh, a more optimal situation for you to feel your chest when you do some sort of fly variation. Dumbbells are great. But the problem with dumbbells versus a cable is that the top range of motion, gravity's taken over. You're not really targeting your chest at all during the last 20, 30 degrees because gravity is assisting you. Whereas a cable, you have constant tension. And so the line of pull, what you do when you have the cable, you could feel the tension all the way from when you set up. So you could properly set up the position that feels best on your chest and all the way to when you squeeze at the top, you'll be holding and squeezing your chest the entire time rather than at that bottom range and not at the top range, which is what happens when you do a dumbbell uh, fly, even if it's an incline or if it's a flat. Now, the incline dumbbell uh, fly has some merit to it, and I do like it, but the incline cable fly, on the other hand, I personally do feel that tension the whole way through when you're doing the fly, and doing the incline work, once again, helps target not just your normal pec, but also the upper pec, which a lot of people tend to forget, and if you want that 3D chest, the ass chest, kind of that round, circular thing that's just right there, you want to make sure you're doing enough incline work. So an incline cable fly, where you set up with a low incline on the bench, you pull, point of tension, make sure you feel the tension at the bottom point, slightly angle your arms, and then squeeze at the top. For me, is one of my favorite chest isolation exercises. I wasn't joking when I said four underrated chest exercises. The floor press I love. I would probably put the floor press as my number one bench assistance movement. But besides that, it's great for growing your chest. I talked before about the low incline bench press, which is great. The reverse grip push-up, if you're used to doing a lot of things that internally rotate the shoulders, consider that one. It externally rotates the shoulder, which makes it easier for you to handle more volume when it comes to pressing movements. And then lastly, the low incline cable fly. If you find the low to high just doesn't work for you, this is probably going to be your go-to chest isolation exercise. Guys, I'm here dropping the knowledge how to grow your chest. These are exercises you should be doing. Let me know how they feel. Let me know if these change your life, which they should if you're struggling to grow your chest. I think these are four highly underrated chest exercises. If you enjoyed this video, you made it all the way to the end of the video. You thought to yourself, Omar, when are you going to upload another informative video? And oh wait, I just did. Like the damn video. Alice, how many likes are we going for here? A modest 2300. I'm gonna ignore that. We're going for 5,000 likes, like this video, and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.